Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in my Kiwi Basics with Python tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is actually just acquiring Kiwi, what Kiwi is, and all of that, and really just testing the installation. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what is Kiwi? So this is the Kiwi website, kiwi.org, and whenever you go there you'll just be sent to this hashtag home. So Kiwi is just a cross-platform uh, software development kit. So you can think of it, it's just a GUI, some way to make GUIs with Python, kind of like Tkinter, only the kicker with Kiwi is that it's cross-platform. And of course, being cross-platform to like Linux, Mac OS, and Windows isn't too phenomenal. Obviously, you can do that with Tkinter, but where this shines is it is cross-platform even into mobile with iOS and Android. And uh, with that, it also can interact with special features of your phone. So for example, on your phone, uh, you have, for one, a touch screen, but also there's various hand gestures that you can do with a phone, like the basic ones would be, you know, like this is supposedly a, a zoom, and then you can do like this, and that zooms out. Uh, stuff like that, you're able to do, and you, uh, alternatively, you can also, you know, do spins and all kinds of stuff, uh, and that's really specific to the operating system that you're on. So what Kiwi does is it, it kind of allows for that, and also you can connect to, say, like the Android API, and you can access the, you know, the phone's camera, let's say, or the gyro, or, or whatever. So with that, Kiwi's obviously quite powerful. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do, and it's relatively simplistic to get started. Um, and you, you can basically use this, and then you can use something like uh, Bulldozer, for example, for Android. You can convert it to an Android application, put it in Google Play, and you're all set. You're going to get rich. So, not really. But anyway, uh, so that's that. Let's go ahead and get started. So what do we need? So for Kiwi to work, you need Pygame first, then Kiwi. Kiwi kind of uses Pygame. So uh, to get Py, first you're going to want to get Pygame, then Kiwi. So obviously if you're on say uh, Linux, you would use something like sudo apt get install python pygame. If you have pip uh, already installed, you could just say pip install pygame. Um, and if you're on Windows, you can do this as well, if you have a 32-bit operating system anyways. So I'll hit it, I'm, I'm using or a 32-bit python. Now I hit it, I, since I have a 64-bit version of python, it gets a little angry with me. So I have to use a different um, a different thing, and I'll show that as well. But anyways, for most people, either sudo app get or pip install will work. Also, I have a pip install tutorial video, so if you have any confusion with how to use pip install, uh, check that out. So finally, I will just show uh, the final place you can get it if you are already familiar with pip, is you can come to this website here, and he's got all of the Python packages. It used to be just simple binary .exes, but he's moved to wheels curses. But anyways, you can come here and you can just type in Pygame, and actually here's Kiwi as well, which happened to be the first thing that was found, but you can get the Kiwi wheel, so for example, I'm on 3.4, so this is C, Python 3.4, and then this is for a 64-bit Windows, so I would download this one, and wait for it, and then I would go click on Pygame, and I would download this one for Pygame, same thing. So now you've got those two wheels. And again, this is for if you're like a 64-bit version of Windows or for whatever reason you couldn't get the other stuff to work for you. But anyways, once those are downloaded, you'll go to your downloads page. And we'll, we'll leave, and actually I'm going to close out of this because I'm going to use something different now. Uh, but anyways, you can come here, just go to your computer, and on downloads you can just hold shift, right click, and we're going to open the command window there. So that opens up a command window into that directory. So then, for me, I could do something like this. pip install, and I already forgot what they're calling them. So, so it's, at least it starts with Pygame. So pip install, Pygame, and I'll hit tab, and that's the full wheel. So now I could hit enter, and this will install based on that wheel file, although I still got an error here. Oh, okay, I know what it's doing. It's referencing my, uh, I have two versions of Python here, 2.7 and 3. So to reference 3 very specifically, C colon slash Python 34 slash, I think it'll be script slash pip install. And let's try that one more time. And in fact, let me, I uh, thought I could go, here we go, edit, see default, prop, we'll go to properties. And hopefully we can make this text a little bigger. Here we go, font. So y'all can read it. Okay, so anyways, 
Uh, that should be it. I can't remember if it's a capital S or not. I'm pretty sure it is. We'll hit enter and see what happens. Yeah, there we go. So that installs Pygame for me anyways, since I'm on a 64-bit. Obviously, if you're on 32-bit, you can use this process as well. You would just download the different, you know, let's say you run Python 3.4 or 32-bit. This would be your download instead. So now we'll now that we've got Python, we can also do the same thing with Kiwi. So pip, or actually, let's just do an up arrow, and we'll just delete this original one. And then we'll say Kiwi. There's the Kiwi wheel. Hit enter. Wait for it. Downloads on packs. And I already have Kiwi, so it says everything was satisfied. But anyway, so that's the installation process for Kiwi. It's going to vary slightly depending on your operating system, although basically every new version of either 2.7 or 3.4 is going to come with PIP. So PIP is probably the easiest method. And then again, if you have a 64 bit or some other operating system that um, at least for Windows, um, you can use this this website here. I'll put a link to uh, this website in the description. If I forget, someone remind me and I will put it there. I like to forget. So anyways, once you have that, you're ready to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to uh, just minimize this all for now. I don't think I'll need it again. But first, let's go ahead and just import uh, Kiwi. And let me make my font here bigger as well. I forgot to do that, sorry. Apply. Import Kiwi, and just make sure that we, we can run this. So just save and run that, and uh, make sure you don't get any errors. This is just some info. You'll see that Kiwi spits out a lot of stuff. So anyway, uh, so that's that. So import Kiwi, as long as that works, you installed things correctly, or at least up until this point. Now, if, you, if you're following along right on this video, you'll find uh, that you are, or right when this video is released, you're probably using uh, Kiwi 1.8.0, I think. Um, and so what you can do is, be, if you're using something that is a newer version of Kiwi that maybe isn't available to older versions, you can, and you might see that people suggest that you always do something like this. So Kiwi.require, and you can require a version number, so 1.8.0. Uh, I think is the one that we're using. I already forgot, but let, let's just keep you require 1.8.0 and see if we have any issues. No, nah. yeah. So v 1.8.0, everything's fine. And if you if someone is using an older version of Kiwi and they try this, it just won't work. So and it'll you know give them an error like oh you don't have that. So let's try, let's try 1.9.0. I'm not quite sure what'll pop up here, but yeah, right. So it just gives you an error and says it's too old. Anyway, this isn't totally necessary. You can have a Kiwi script without it, but most people will just add the latest version. But again, if they have an old, if the person has an older version, it doesn't necessarily mean it won't run. So I'm going to comment it out for now. But you might want to add that in a production version if you're using features that require a certain version. Moving along, um, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is create our first app class, and so this is basically. Um, going to be the crux of your Kiwi application. So instead of import Kiwi, we're actually going to do from Kiwi import app. And actually, it's capital A, my bad. This is a class. So from Kiwi import app, you can have the Kiwi require if you want. Um, but I'm not going to leave it there just because it's not really necessary for the stuff we're using. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go from kiwi.uix.label. We want to import uh, the label. So what is this? Now Kiwi is actually extensively um, documented both in the Kiwi code itself and on the Kiwi website. But let's say you're curious about the Kiwi uh, code. So we're seeing from kiwi.uix.label and we're importing this label. And what label is, is it's just straight up like a label. You can think of a label much like the labels in Tkinter if you're familiar, but a label can also be a button, and a button is an element of a label. So anyway, let's let's look at it that real quick. So I'm gonna open up computer, see Python 34, lib, it'll be in site packages, and then we're looking for Kiwi. So here is Kiwi. We open up Kiwi and we can see we're from kiwi.uix, so we'll go into the uix directory, dot label. So now we're looking for label script. Here it is. We're going to right click, edit with idle. And this is our actual label.py. So we can come down here and we can see that all this is just commented stuff. But here's our class label. And then we can basically see this is the initialization. So this is always run. 
And then these are all of like the elements of labels, but you can see that you've got, you know, you can update the texture. You, this is the create label, uh, more update there on touchdown. So you can see there's already code created for if you were to press, uh, then there's you know basically just a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, if you want to read through all the stuff that is possible with a label, you can, and obviously you can see uh, it's extremely well documented actually in the code itself. I mean, everything has far more documentation than the, there's like more documentation here than code. So anyway, that should be pretty useful. But as you can see, I mean, this is all for just label, right? So there's a lot of stuff you can do uh, with Kiwi, but you can also go to the Kiwi website and they have quite a bit of documentation uh, for various things on their website. So you can go um, docs and within docs I'm pretty yeah there's like a search here so you can search things in the documentation uh, that you're looking for so if you're looking for a button or if you're looking for a canvas drawing or whatever you can search it but we'll talk a little bit more on that uh, in a little bit so now what we want to do is just build a quick simple um, application just to show you guys the back end so it's a lot Kiwi is a lot like Pygame where there's uh, the back end is really written for you you don't need to write code Although with Pygame, you have to write code for a button. But you don't have to write code for like where is the mouse on the screen. That's already done for you. You don't have to write code uh, to do like the multi-touch app, you know, apps and stuff like that. You don't have to do any of that. Your job is just to focus on the logic. So it's actually, it's really useful um, in that regard. So anyways, let's go ahead and do, uh, we'll create our, create our class. And we're going to call this Simple Kiwi. And that's our Simple Kiwi class. And then in here for the inheritance, we're going to inherit from the app class. So let's uh, Kiwi, and then we open up the app class here. And this is your app class. Not too much here, but that's what we're inheriting from. So basically, we're inheriting all of this. And here is your actual app class. So this entire thing here, this is all the code that we've just inherited. So again, you don't uh, just understand, like, that's what you're that's what I mean by they've done a lot of the work for you because this is all the work you would you know normally probably need to write yourself but someone has already done it for you <laughs> so anyways we're inheriting from app now uh, moving right along also if you're not too familiar with object-oriented programming my channel typically we build everything with functions uh, but when it comes to GUIs object-oriented programming is definitely the way to go so we use that here I do have an object-oriented crash course with using tkinter as an example so if you're a little confused you can check that out I will put links to that as well so anyways class simple kiwi inheriting from app uh, now what we're gonna just do is define our build and uh, we just pass the uh, traditional self there Again, if you don't understand that, check out the crash course. Define build, and then we're just going to have it return a uh, capital L label. And then we're going to say the text of that label. Again, if you want to know more about the parameters possible with label, look at that kiwi.uix.label and then the label class within. And we're just going to say the typical hello world, exclamation mark, because this computer is really excited to say hello. Now, uh, that's that so we have our app and it's, that's pretty much all we have to do at this point so now what we're just gonna say is if name equals uh, main just that typical line you don't really need this this is just so if you were to import this script uh, it would only run if you were actually running the script so this wouldn't this code wouldn't run if you we were importing it but anyway simple kv uh, and then dot run and that will actually run our uh, script so we can go ahead and save and run that now oh actually I already know what I did uh, sample kiwi simple kiwi and then what was the actual error that it was thrown cannot import name app from kiwi in oh I know what I've done right so from kiwi dot app right so what we're we're just like label right we were this is the uh, the actual script name so from kiwi.app here we open that up that's from kiwi.app and then we're trying to import the app class wherever it is it's, like I said so much documentation <laughs> anyway we're importing app which by the way inherits from event dispatcher so as you can imagine there's a lot of code that is rewritten for, or already written for you anyway simple kiwi app run that should be all set now wait for it 
and here we have our hello world application boom okay so 15 minutes basic Kiwi application but what's neat is this application already could run just about all the major operating systems Android iOS Windows Linux and Mac OS I think that was what I forgot anyway uh, pretty cool obviously you're we're, this isn't really interactive in any way although we can resize this application already which is pretty neat um, and you can see it all just basically by default kind of fixes whatever it needs to fix so again that's pretty cool and we basically did all that in very few lines of code here so anyway what we're gonna be talking about is kind of expanding on this expanding more of your options for the GUI there's actually a lot of more to cover as far as the basics are concerned so that's what we're gonna be talking about next is kind of expanding on this so anyway uh, stay tuned for that if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below otherwise as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support subscriptions and until next time